to you by wide awake. The classroom alarm clock. Ever had a day when you just can't stay awake during your planning period? Try wide awake, the alarm clock for classroom use. Wide awake has three different settings to ensure you wake up before class starts. Students yelling teacher, teacher, the final dismissal bell, or the ever popular sound of the office calling your classroom. Wide awake, they'll never catch you sleeping again. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today on our episode we are talking about building relationships with students and setting that classroom culture in your classroom the first two weeks of school. I'd like to welcome our next guest um, from Christian County High School, Mr. Grishay. Yes. Hello and welcome. Right, thank you, Have thank a seat. You. No applause yeah. for his entrance? It's okay, I don't need it. <laughs> That's all right. Maybe we can overlay that. My, my okay. students would agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. All right. So welcome to our show. We're Thank excited you. to have you. Appreciate you taking time to be here with us. Yeah. Um, so you teach at Christian County High School. And tell us a little bit more about yourself. Yeah. So I have been at Christian County High School for, this is going to be my third year now. Um, I've been an earth-based science teacher, which is a freshman science course. But next year I'll be teaching biology as well. Exciting. Yeah. You like the change? Yes, yes. Well, I love oh, science. Good. Yeah. So anything would be would be good then. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, I love my department and I love being at Chris County High School. So yeah. as long as I get to stay a science teacher there, I'm happy. Well, good. We're excited about that. Uh, we do have a picture um, of an important relationship that you've brought to share with us. So yeah. tell us about this picture. Who's in this? Why is All right. So important? that's myself. Um, and then that's my wife. She also is a teacher at Chris County High School. Um, she's in the SPED department. And then that's our oldest two biological children. We have six total. Um, but this is just my oldest son and my oldest biological daughter. We were actually in Guanajuato, Mexico, so that's one of my favorite places wow. in, in Mexico, is the city of Guanajuato. It's an old mining town. Um, all the roads are underground, um, beautiful houses and everything, so. That's amazing. Did you guys live there, or is this a vacation picture? Um, no, that was a few years back. We were driving uh, coast to coast, so we used to live in Mexico. We lived in Guadalajara for four years, wow. um, and my oldest son was actually, he was born there, but he hadn't been back since we left when he was two. And so we went just to show him where he was born in Guadalajara and then drive across the country, see some of the places we like. That's super um, cool. And then end up in All right, right. so okay. we're talking about relationships and talking about that culture with your students. And mm -hmm. um, we're excited to have you on to share a little bit of the, the view from a high school perspective. Okay. Because I think, um, I think sometimes teachers think it's hard to build those relationships with high school students. Um, and so we value your perspective. So is that something that you really focus on those first two weeks of school, getting to know your students, mm -hmm. building those relationships? Yeah, it's, it's not hard to, I think high schoolers are easier than all the other ages. Really? Well, yeah, they're almost adults. I mean, they think they're adults. They they're do. Not. <laughs> but, <laughs> My 10-year-old does too, so. Yeah, but they're, they're <laughs> old enough they can understand uh, more complicated, complex things. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like they're really starting to get, you know, fleshed out as human beings and all these different nuances to them. Yeah. You can talk about things like, what do you do for a job? What kind of car do you, like things like that you can talk about yeah. with teenagers and high school students. I couldn't do with a five-year-old. Yeah, um, true. and so I, but I do think that's very important is, is having those relationships like I said finding out where they live that's my wife and I we enjoy living here in Hopkinsville yeah. um, because that's part of it too just being a part of the community and caring about their lives and what they do Absolutely. education is a small part of their lives yeah right? for sure and I think I'm glad that you said that because that is something being a part of their lives and let them see you as a human and as yeah. a person not just their teacher and seeing them more as just a student in the classroom too so you start that right off the bat yeah. Um, so how do you weave in those conversations and building relationships with students and getting to know them and with like your instruction? Do you start that early on, kind of like intertwining that? How does that work in your class? So I usually, we, we have the bell ringer time, mm -hmm. um, and I'll be honest, I don't use it in the traditional sense. I try and pull something out like the news or something that's going on in the community, and we spend a good five to ten minutes at least just talking about these things and getting them to tell me their opinions. Okay. Um, I'm big on making sure they understand within, within data and science and all of that, there's bias and everything. Sure. Um, and so helping them to understand bias and also data interpretation, the idea is let's look at something, let's talk about it, let me hear your opinion. It's not about my opinion, it's about your mm -hmm. opinion. Um, because your ability to share your opinion and also recognize other people's opinion will help you to navigate through the different bias you find in data. Because um, oh, yeah. even in science, that's something that, that happens, that a different researcher will look at the data and, and have a completely different um, result they come to because of their own personal bias. Absolutely. And so we started just looking at these things going on in the world, like, oh, let's look what's going on in agriculture. Um, what do you think about this? Do you think they should plant a different crop, or why or why not? And I have county kids, you know, who live way out in the middle of nowhere, and I have city kids, mm -hmm. and they have all these different views of it. Um, cool. And in doing that, too, they, it helps them see other perspectives, 
while also trying to find their own perspective because they are teenagers. They don't really know who they want to be yet. Right. Um, and part of the process is just helping them get there. Nice. I love that. I love that you're tying it into their community and what's going on around them. A lot of times you kind of think of that as something a history teacher would do. But I like that you're tying that in with the science as well. Um, are they pretty vocal? Like, do they start the year off pretty vocal about their opinions? Or does it take a little while to, while to like, warm up to that? It depends on the student. Okay. I mean, because some people, like, they're just, I'm going to talk right away. Some people, not so much. Some people have to pull it out of them more. Sure. <laughs> um, but by the end of the school year, I really get that happening where everybody realizes. It's the idea is, like you said, community. It's building a community. Absolutely. We're, we're all a part of this community. Um, yeah. Just the truth is, no matter where you live, most people don't end up leaving where they're from. And if they do, they come back. Um, I'm from Southern California. Most of the kids I went to high school with, they still live where I grew mm -hmm. up at. Um, so it doesn't matter where you're from. Most people don't really leave home. So we're going to be a community for the rest of our lives. Right. We should start learning how to do that now. That's good. And start to build that community in your classroom mm -hmm. so they can invest in their community outside those, those doors as well. Yeah. All right. So we're going to be right back after this little break. And we'll play an icebreaker game. The Teaching View brought to you by Teddy Bear Teacher Care. Are you anxious, stressed, or just need a hug? The stuffed emotional support animal comes in lavender or jasmine scents for a calming effect. Provide school ID for a 100% discount. Every teacher needs emotional support. Teddy Bear Teacher Care is here for you. Buy your stuffed emotional support animal today. All right, welcome back. We are going to play a little icebreaker game called What's My Number? Um, this is something that you can do with your students the first day or two of school. And then you can actually have your students do this, um, create their own numbers, and play this again throughout the year. And so, as always, we go over our expectations, the content and directions, and what we expect of the students before we start any activity in our class. So for this one, we say um, the eyes and ears are only on your partner, working together efficiently, and everyone shares. Keep the conversation related to the work at hand, and then listen to each other, because this is an opportunity to get to know each other a little bit better. So um, he has shared some numbers with us, yes. and so we are going to, or I am going to try to figure out what these numbers represent, okay? Okay, so at this point, we will be talking with our partner. I'm trying to figure out his numbers, uh, okay. 21, 4, and 8, and based on the conversation we had earlier, I'm going to say... Four is the number of years you've been in Christian County? No. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> 21, the age you got married? No. Oh, I'm really bad at this. Um, 48. I mean, this one's a really rough one. 48. Unless my wife told you this obscure story about our lives, you're not going to be <laughs> <laughs> no, 48 is the number of uh, marshmallows you can fit in your mouth. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know the answer to that. No? Okay, so maybe we should find that out. Maybe we you should might do be that. correct on that. Um, I don't, I don't okay, know. so what do your numbers represent? Okay, so 21, that's how many years my wife and I have been together. Oh, uh, not married. Yeah. Okay. We just started okay. dating in high school, so yeah. Okay. Um, and then four, that's how many universities that I've attended. Um, I'm actually in the fourth one right now. Awesome. Where are you at right now? Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. Awesome. Yeah, working on another that's master's. Another master's. Yes. How many do you have? I have a master's uh, and then two postgraduate degrees and a bachelor's and a doctorate. Nice. Uh, Dr. Roche, I'm yeah. sorry. I should have I should have addressed you as doctor. I don't, I don't <laughs> okay. What about 48? 48. Um, so my wife and I, when we moved to New York City, we lived in Jamaica, Queens. Um, okay. And we left from my parents' house in Southern California, and we drove all the way there, and we arrived in 48 hours. Wow. So we drove from California to New York City in 48 hours. You stopped, right? Like for gas. The way. Oh my gosh. Okay. I can you stopped imagine. For gas. That's it. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's exciting. Well, thank you so much for sharing about yourself. Yeah. And so the idea would be that I would share my numbers and we would go back and forth and get to know each other. You can do this from the perspective of the teachers sharing their numbers the first day of school. And kids are guessing, their students are guessing to figure out what those numbers mean. You can trick them by doing decimals, that's always fun. Um, fractions or anything like that. Um, mixing it up, doing different numbers. So. All right, thank you for playing. No All right, so the last question I have for you, um, icebreakers tend to come off, I think some teachers perceive them as like elementary, like that's a kid's thing, it's games. 
So how do you um, how do you do that for for your high schoolers? What tips do you have for doing things like that in your classroom for fellow teachers? Um, I would say that nothing will come off um, beneath them if you don't treat them that way. Okay. Um, they might. I mean, they're they're high schoolers, so they're going to sit there and say that all they want to, like, oh, you're doing this and that. But if you treat them with respect and you treat them with dignity and you treat them the way that you're always expected to be treated, um, they, they pick up on that. Yes. Um, that's really the idea is just sincerely actually caring about them as human beings, seeing them as actual equals. Mm -hmm. um, yes, there is the power dynamics that you're the teacher and they're the student. But at the end of the day, they're humans, we're human. Like, mm -hmm. And in just a couple of years time, they're going to be you know, voting adults defending our country. Yes. Um, and I make sure I'm constantly reminding them that as well, is that I expect them to act like the adults that they're becoming. Yes. Um, because they don't have long left. So if you treat them as a child in elementary school, mm -hmm. they're going to act like a child yeah. in elementary school. So I get that. Thank you so much for being a part of our first episode of The Teaching View. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Stay tuned. This episode of The Teaching View brought to you by falsified academic kid educator university. Tired of spending years and thousands of dollars pursuing your higher education? Falsified Academic Kid Educator University has the master's degree program for you. In just 10 minutes or less and under $100 you too can get your FAKE degree. That's right, for just $99.98 you can have a master's degree in any one of 8 different education programs. What are you doing for the next 10 minutes? Contact us today and then ask about our doctorate programs. The easiest and most affordable degrees available from FAKE University. Thank you for joining us on our first episode of The Teaching View, where we can share strategies, resources, and support for our new teachers. I'd like to thank our guests for joining us today and sharing their wisdom and insight and some resources for you. We are going to do some little giveaways, and so if you did not get a chance to scan this QR code or get this QR code at our Teacher Induction Summer Institute, we encourage you uh, to scan it if you have it. If not, feel free to um, check out the tiny URL at the bottom of the screen to submit questions for our next episode. Um, we will have our three uh, instructional supervisors here with us to answer all your questions about PLCs, um, RTI processes, instruction resources, anything you have questions about, they're gonna be here to share um, or be here to answer those questions. All entries received by August 5th, about four o'clock, will be entered to win one of our amazing prizes for this first episode. We have two relationship building kits that you could win. Um, it has all the resources from this episode to do all the activities with your students. And then with that, you will get a copy of the book Relentless by Hamish Brewer, where he talks about the importance of building relationships with students. Um, and I hope you enjoy that. It's a great read. Um, a third winner will get a copy of the book that Miss Tiffany Leak shared with us. It's called It's Okay to Make Mistakes by Todd Parr. So again, scan the QR code or visit that tiny URL at the bottom of the screen and enter a question for our instructional supervisors for our next episode. And that's how you will enter to win one of these um, giveaways. Mm -hmm.